Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to walk you through the best in-game settings for keyboard and mouse in Fortnite Chapter 3. Now, yes, I know I technically already made a settings guide for Fortnite Chapter 3. However, as most of you guys should know, the settings I'm going to cover today are completely different than the ones I covered then. You see, rather than going through all the graphic settings on the first page, that's what the other video was about, this one is going to be about every setting that's not on the first page. This includes stuff like your keybind, edit on release, sensitivity options, different in-game settings, pretty much everything you can ever think of that is not on the first page. Go watch this video if you want those settings. I think what I'm also gonna do is throw up a cheeky little hand cam for this. It should have both my keyboard and my mouse. That way you guys can see why I prefer certain settings over other ones, and the keyboard will be right there in front of you. So yeah, make sure to drop a like if this helps you out. I know a ton of you just switched to keyboard and mouse after Christmas. It's also a whole new chapter. But anyways, without further ado, let's get right on into it. All right, so there should be a hand cam. You guys can see hands, mouse, keyboard, all that good stuff. I know people are gonna ask which mouse and keyboard I'm using. I pretty much switch it every week, but I'm currently with the Logitech G Pro, the normal one. Keyboard is the Razer Huntsman TE, and then the mouse pad, it's the only thing I never switch. It is the Mouse Pad Company XL, but that's not really what we're here for. We are here for all of these settings, not these ones. This is the first page I was talking about. We're here for the game settings. Game UI, mouse and keyboard, not controller, kind of. We're gonna cover that a little bit. We're here for all this crap. Now, where we're actually gonna start are your sliding settings, which funnily enough is in the one settings page I said we weren't really gonna look at. And yeah, I know I'm going out of order, but it's chapter three, sliding is important. Where your sliding settings are on keyboard and mouse is is the controller options page. You can see it says controller, but it does work for keyboard and mouse. And as you can see on the left here, we have the slide hold time. By the way, that's why my face is over here. You can actually see all the settings now. Let's go. But what this setting does is it basically is how long you have to hold down your crouch or your slide button before you actually start sliding. It goes anywhere from 0.1 seconds to 0.25 seconds. The default is 0.15. And what I recommend you guys use is 0.1. Why I recommend this, basically the lowest value, is because if you're looking at my keyboard cam, you should be able to see when my pinky finger, this thing right here, when it holds down my crouch key on shift, it's pretty much instant when I start sliding. I have so much more control on it. You can see I could basically slide cancel. But if you compare that to the maximum of 0.25 or even the default, it's just so much slower it just feels bad. Look at my finger. I've been holding for 0.25 seconds and then I finally slide. 0.25 seconds, slide. No, 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 no. That is not something we want to get used to. No matter how awkward it feels at 0.1, you gotta get used to it. It's gonna give you the most control on keyboard and mouse, even on controller. So go change your slide settings, your slide hold time to 0.1 seconds and get the heck used to it. This is what all the pros use. It's how they all edit, build, slide, do everything while sliding. Oh, it just makes sliding so much nicer. So do what I say. After that, we'll finally go in order. We will go to the second page, which are your game settings. So where we're going to begin are the movement ones. You can see there's different little sections of settings. Starting with toggle sprint, I recommend everyone turn this off. Basically what toggle sprint does, I mean, you can read it above my head, but essentially when you turn it on, you could press a button and boom, you will start sprinting. And then if you press it again, you'll just do the normal bot walk, AKA when you're not sprinting. And before you guys say, But Jarian, don't you have Sprint by default on? Yes, I do. And that is the whole point of why you do not need Toggle Sprint. So turn this thing off. Following up toggle sprint is the setting I just mentioned, sprint by default. I recommend everyone turn this on. If you don't have it on, you're pretty much an idiot. Essentially what that does is it's basically toggle sprint if toggle sprint was always toggled on. So no matter what I do, I'm always going to be sprinting. Except if I have a keybind for sprint and I press it, boom, I'll do the bot walk. I have to hold it down. You can see it's on right alt. What the? I just changed colors. Huh? Um, anyways. 
guys. You're always going to be sprinting no matter what. You do not need a sprint key. The sprint key, like I said, is only useful if you want to bot walk, which is not useful at all, really. <laughs> it's just a gimmick. But the most important thing about sprint by default is that it actually allows you to free up your left shift. That's what most people use. The default setting for sprinting is holding down left shift. But because you have sprint by default, I don't have to press left shift. I don't have to press anything. That is now a really good optimal keybind that you could use for anything like your cone. That's what most pros have it as. You can see over here, I have it as my crouch button, and that's part of why I can crouch really fast, or at least I used to be, before they added sliding. <laughs> All good though, because sprint by default is one of the best settings Epic has ever added, so if you don't have it on, what are you freaking doing, dude? Sprint cancels reloading, on the other hand, I recommend turning off. It's pretty self-explanatory, but if you shoot and then you go to reload, but then sprint, look at that. It cancels it automatically, which is not good, especially if you have sprint by default on and you listen to me. Look at that. It would be so annoying. You'd never be able to reload. <laughs> Therefore, turn sprint cancels reloading off. That way, you can shoot. And hey, look. Wow, it doesn't get canceled. Final movement setting is auto open doors, which I highly recommend everyone turn on. They actually buffed it this season because if you slide with this setting on, you will not lose any momentum. Look at this. It's amazing. Look how cool this is. Look how freaking cool this is! <laughs> but yeah, auto open doors is basically, it will open the door for you. I don't have to press my interact key. I lose no momentum while building, while running through. Okay, I just got stuck on the door. That was not what I wanted to show. I wanted a better example if, say, I was tarping. It's like, it never slows you down. Wow. And if I slide, it's so cool! <laughs> Ah. Turn auto open doors on, people. Next up, after the movement settings, are your combat settings. Epic actually added one, not in Chapter 3. It was in Chapter 2 Season 8, but I never made a video that season on this setting. We'll get to that in a minute. We gotta start with hold to swap pickup. I recommend everyone have this on because there's no reason not to. Most people don't know what it does, but let me show you a quick example. So normally, with any weapon, you're going to just pick it up with your interact key, right? Mine, you can see, is scroll wheel up. So if I scroll up on my mouse, I pick it up. It goes right into my inventory. However, what would happen if I had a few items like I do now, but I did not have a full inventory? Say I'm in the early game, I only have two weapons or something, and I want to go pick up another one. Watch what it does. It goes straight into the back of my inventory, because that's just how Fortnite inventory sorting works. Guess what though? If you want to make a certain weapon or a certain item, like say I'm swapping the gold shotgun that I I have right now, the third slot in my inventory, if I want to swap that, aka this, for this, without actually having to do what I just did, which is drop them, or drop one of them, and then pick the other one up, all I have to do is turn that hold to swap pickup on, and then hold down my interact key. So look at that. I didn't have to do anything extra. It's so much quicker, so much easier, and all I'm doing is holding down my interact key. And yes, I know my interact key is scroll wheel up, which you can't hold down. I actually have it double bound. If you go to my use, you can see. I have a second use key on C just for hold to swap pickup. I recommend you guys double bind it as well. I'm gonna cover it later. But that key bind is what makes hold to swap pickup so useful for people like me with scroll wheel pickup because now I can just swap the heck out of these without having to go into my inventory. Back to the other combat settings, we were on toggle targeting. Toggle targeting, I recommend turning off. What this does is when you turn it on, look at my mouse, my hands are up in the air, I am no longer pressing or holding, and you can see I'm aimed in. Then to unaim in, I would have to right click again. The reason I don't recommend people using that and instead having it off, you actually have to hold it down I'm not holding it anymore. You can see I'm not aimed in. I'm only aimed in while I hold and press right click. Why I think that's better is it allows for more control. It also is just way quicker. 
If you're going for a quick ADS shot, you're not gonna get stuck ADSing, which happens a lot if you don't have this setting on. And overall, it's much cleaner. It's almost like the point in one second sliding in a way. There's a higher skill ceiling, so just get used to it because you'll be better off in the long run, holding down right click to aim in and not using toggle targeting. Then we have Mark Danger while targeting. It's really not the most useful setting because anytime you're gonna play with someone and ping something, you can just tell them where they are. But if I'm gonna ping this wall without aiming in, you can see it is blue, right? Eight meters. With that setting though, while aimed in, so while targeting someone, if I ping, boom, it's gonna be red. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, in theory, it would be cool if you had no comms, right? Like you're not talking to your teammate. You could use one ping for saying, this is where we should rotate. And then the other for saying, oh no, there's guys over there. It even makes a different sound. Listen, and then, but like, eh, I mean, it's really not too useful. No reason to not have it on, which is why I say to. But yeah, it's not the most important setting we'll cover today. Oh, and I can't build or edit. Auto pickup weapons is a setting I used to recommend the heck out of. How this works is whenever you run over any weapon, you're just going to pick it up like that. I did not press my interact key. Hopefully you caught that. I'll do it again. I'm not pressing my interact key, my hands in the air, and it picked up those weapons. I used to say this was useful because off spawn, you could just land on a gun like this, and you would easily win the 50-50, especially if you had a bad drop. But like nowadays, most people, including myself, use scroll wheel pickup, so it's better to land next to the gun and then scroll wheel it. It's also annoying early game if you're just running through either a few bodies or just random loot, and you're picking everything up, which you don't want, and then you later have to drop it, and go into your inventory. It's just not as useful as it used to be, or as I thought it used to be. So I have it off. You can use it on though. Now for the interesting one, preferred item slots. Hopefully you guys have toyed around with this, but basically if you press the configure button, you're going to go to this screen. And what this does is anytime you pick up a certain item, like say an assault rifle, it is going to go to the preferred loadout slot that you have. So my preferred loadout slot for my assault rifle is slot number Number one, you could see actually next to my head, it shows where that is. That's basically the first weapon slot I have. This one right here, my number two keybind. And anytime I pick up an AR, it doesn't matter what AR it is, it's going to go into the second slot. Let me show if I have a shotgun. I'll move it into the second slot. Watch this. Oh, you see that? It replaced the shotgun in the second slot because I configured it so that's where it should always be and that's where I prefer it. Obviously for you guys, especially people on controller, this is going to depend on your specific, I guess, preference. The way I do it is loadout slot one is my AR, loadout slot two is my shotgun. I don't have anything for loadout slot three or four. I mean, I guess I could do like an SMG or even a sniper, but like the thing about having anything past my AR or shotgun for me is I'm so used to, regardless of if it's a shotgun or if it's an SMG, I'm used to off spawn having it in my first slot. And like sometimes, especially this season, I have my SMG in my first slot anyways because I don't carry an AR. SMGs are that busted. So like to me, the only important ones are an AR, which is my first slot. And then of course my shotgun, which is my second slot, because those are what I always prefer in those slots. The SMG so Sometimes I'll have it, like I said, in my first. Sometimes I'll have it in the third. And then utility and that other stuff, it's not that useful for actually having a preferred item slot. I mean, maybe it is to you guys. You could obviously configure it any way you want, but that's just the way I do. And speaking of utility slash heals, I have auto sort consumables to the right on. So what that does is it basically is a preferred item slot if you configure it. Loadout slot five is going to be a consumable. Even if I have one weapon, I always want stuff like my heels or even a grappler to go straight to the back of my inventory. Hopefully you guys saw that. So you can see there's minis. I'm going to interact and pick it up. And it's always going to go to the back of my inventory because I am used to that being where my weapons are not. I'm really never going to have five weapons. And because of that, you might as well stick your consumables there in the final slot, the last slot of your inventory. Without it, you would have a situation where, say, you picked up minis, you also 
also maybe picked up an AR, and then you go to use your AR, but guess what? You don't have auto sewer consumables to the right on, so you pick up middies, and you're wondering, what the heck just happened? But no, you watch Papa Jarian, you have preferred item slots on, and auto sewer consumables to the right on. These are the god combat settings. Over to the building settings, we have the first one of reset building choice on keyboard and mouse, which like I said in the title, this video is for only keyboard and mouse. Reset building choice does not really make a difference. You could have it on or off. It makes absolutely no difference because I do not use a quick bar. A quick bar is basically a keybind to bring up your builds. Nobody on keyboard other than like Booga uses that. Booga's a freaking weirdo. And the reasoning behind that is it's just easier, it's quicker, and it's a lot more consistent to bring up, say, your wall or your floor by just pressing the keybind. And side note, the only reason Booga uses it is because he got used to it. He'll basically build like a wall, but instead of swapping to either his pickaxe or to a weapon by pressing that specific keybind, he'll press the quick bar, which let me quickly bind. I don't even know where it is. That's how useless it is. Oh, here we go. Switch quick bar. I'll put it on zero. So you guys see it in the bottom right? Booga uses that and when he presses it, it's gonna bring out his last weapon and or pickaxe, whichever he had last. So yeah, don't use that. It's really not good. Booga is just a freak who got used to it. In addition to that, it's also why it does not matter if you have reset building choice on or off. I have it on because it looks cool to have all four of these on. I'm a weirdo. After that is disable pre-edit option, which is completely preference. I actually recommend a lot of you guys use this. Don't just turn it on because I have it on. Essentially, what turning it off does is it enables pre-edits. So pre-edits are these things. It gives you the ability to edit your build before you place it, just like this. You could do it for floors. You could do it for ramps. And the reason it's really useful is like you saw in trios, people would basically run up to walls, break them like this and then have their teammates absolutely destroy people. If you're zero pig, you could just take every single wall like this. Oh my god. But the reason I have it off is because I actually am an old man who... I mess up a lot of edits sometimes, and if you notice, like, I'll pre-edit something by accident, and then I'll be fighting someone and be like, what the hell? How did I just pre-edit that? Why am I such a noob? So yeah, that is why I turn pre-edits off, AKA I turn disable pre-edit option on. It's kind of confusing, but that's what Epic decided was gonna be the name of it. And look, if I go to pre-edit, I cannot. I'm pressing my edit key right now, and I cannot pre-edit my wall. It is impossible for me to edit before I place it, which makes me feel like less of a noob because I'm not gonna... Oh, and as I say that, I mess up. There we go. <laughs> turbo building, obviously, boys, turn this on. If you don't know what turbo building does, like, what's wrong with you? It's the reason you could hold down left click and everything builds for you automatically. You don't have to press to place each build one by one, which is what Myth used to do. Back in chapter one, season two, when he used to dominate everyone. <laughs> he was actually the goat, but he got nerfed by turbo building. <laughs> Rest in peace to Myth. Final building setting is the most controversial one by far. It is confirm edit on release. You guys know me, I was the original advocate for confirm edit on release. How it works is rather than having to press your edit key, then select the edit and then press your edit key again, which as you just saw, you can do with confirm edit on release. Like, look at my hand. I'm not letting go. I can just confirm it the normal way. But what confirm edit on release gives you the option to do is it makes it quicker because all you have to do is let go of your left click on your mouse, basically selecting the tiles. And that is how the edit is going to go through. Now, the benefits to this are that it is quicker. It's faster. So your edits are going to be faster. It's also more optimal and better for your movement because when I go to edit, all I have to do is press my edit key once. Then it can go back to pressing my D key, meaning I have better movement. I'm in more control of my movement, and I never have to go and press E again. The one issue, though, is if you actually go to edit, 
and then move your crosshair like down over here. You can see it's gonna mess up the edit. Oh wait, I just made a good edit. <laughs> you cannot make an edit and then hold it and move your crosshair down somewhere else. So you do lose some crosshair placement. You lose that aspect of your control. It also makes some edits and some peaks just a lot harder. But the more you use edit on release, you'll kind of realize that you could find workarounds for those different types of peaks and edits, at least in my opinion. Just use whatever you guys think is best. If you're a fast editor without confirm edit on release, then you don't need to switch to it. However, if your movement's bad and you're on no confirm edit on release, and you're like me, maybe your edits were freaking snail slow, <laughs> then try it out. Let me know what you think. There's pros that use it on. There's pros that use it off. You got Booga and Seti, two of the best players in the entire world. They use Confirm Edit on release. I've noticed that actually most NA pros use Confirm Edit on release, while most EU pros do not. Isn't that kind of interesting? Like Benji Fishy, Mr. Savage, Mongrel. None of them use it. But then you have Booga, Phase Dubs, Epic Whale, Arkham, Rex. All the good NA pros use Confirm Edit on release. But EU pros don't. I don't know. It just comes down to preference, boys, so use whatever you prefer. And that's gonna move us on to the extra game options, which there's not really anything that important. This is all preference if you want to use inverted view. That's where down is up and up is down. I will say don't turn on NVIDIA highlights or peripheral lighting. It may look cool, but it's gonna hurt your FPS. The only kind of important one is tap to search slash interact. This is something I definitely recommend everyone having on. I have to use it because I use scroll wheel pickup. I mean, there's no chest here, which is kind of annoying, but I mean, I guess I'll just show it. Pretend this is a chest. If I did not have tap to search on, then I would not be able to open chests because scrolling does nothing on a chest. I would just sit there trying to open it, but because I have it on, I have tap to interact. All I need to do is just scroll up once and that's going to open a chest. Guys, remember we're pretending this grappler is a chest. It works no matter what your interact key is. So if your interact key is on E, it's gonna pick it up, or C. So yeah, turn it on. You don't need to hold it down. That's what hold to swap pickup is for. Back up here. Yeah. So get used to tap to search and hold to swap pickup. Yeah. That is it for the game settings. Now we're going to go to the game UI, which is your HUD. I actually play on 100% HUD scale. Everyone makes fun of me for it, but just like some of those other settings, it is preference. This is also what I use for the different HUD options. I pretty much have everything on, except for the latency debug stats. This is how you can see your milliseconds of latency or input delay. You just need to turn this on, go to the first page with either DX11 or DX12, and then turn latency markers on and then look in the top left you could see it's gonna show my input delay but I don't really think that's useful for actual games it's kind of just gonna add delay I also have quest progress off which I don't think quests are that important for competitive play or for you know arena and stuff then the only other one I guess is reticle ammo indicator which I actually have on I think I used to have it off but I have it on and what that does is if you look anytime I take out a weapon in. It's gonna show if it's fully reloaded or not. Why did I just like voice crack? <laughs> I'm 24 years old. But yeah, if I shoot, it's gonna go down and then I bring it back out. I can see it's not fully reloaded. It also shows the reload time. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I don't pay a ton of attention to it in game. I cannot pretend that I do. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. But I mean, there's no point in having it off. I feel like that's my rationale for half these settings. It's really not that big. It can be useful if you just go to look at it. It, so turn it on. Why the heck not? And those are your HUD settings. Don't make fun of me for 100% HUD scale, okay? Use whatever you want, but I think default 100% is the nicest. Following that up, we have the mouse and keyboard settings, and you guys can see I'm on a pretty high sense. 8.5, 800 DPI. I'm trying to get good max, okay? Sensitivity is completely preference. Do not ask me what the best sense is. It's all gonna depend on your specific play style, what you think is best. If you guys want different settings to kind of start and toy around with, like me personally, I think just trialing a bunch of different settings is the best way. What the heck? I think that's the best 
best way to find the setting that you're gonna be good with. Any formula that I used to show, I mean, it's really, it's not that useful. Just try a bunch of different stuff. And I would recommend starting at 48 eDPI, which for my DPI is 6%. To calculate eDPI, it's just DPI times your in-game sense. So 800 times 0 0.06, that is 48. I recommend 808%, that is 64 eDPI. I pretty much recommend anything up to like 11 or 12%. Anything higher than that is really, really high. And I feel like you can probably get used to lower. I also think anything lower than like 5% or 40 eDPI is just way too low. 40 eDPI is definitely the lowest I would ever go. Let's see. Like there's no way you can become a god fighter on this. I mean, maybe you'll have god aim, but it's just hard to piece people. Oh man. And I have a big keyboard, bruh. Yeah. Oh, heck no. Mouse sensitivity is all preference, and that includes your targeting sense. I always like to play with a low targeting sense, just because I feel like that's what your targeting and your scoped is for. There's no real reason to have it on 100%, because then what's the point of aiming down sight? Like, I guess maybe to just make it a smaller crosshair so you do more damage, but in that case, it should just be slower so you could actually hit your shot, especially on people far away. That's why you aim down sight with an AR. For the fifth time, though, it's all freaking preference. All of these mouse sensitivity things are preference. The only one that is not is lock input method as mouse. No matter if you use double movement or not, I highly recommend locking your input method as mouse. If I do not have this on and I am currently with double movement or I have double movement settings, <laughs> why did I just say I'm with it? What is double movement, my girlfriend? I mean, your boy is single. <laughs> You can see there's like controller things. Turbo build doesn't always work. It's also weirdly like laggy and glitchy. Turn that on. That is how you get double movement to work. It's just something Epic made. So it always locks your movement as mouse. And hey, look, I can crank and it's all fixed. Oh. Okay, that was interesting. The mouse fight settings, I don't really even know what they do, so I'm just gonna skip them. And we're also gonna skip controller options because I showed the edit hold time. I mean, I guess I'll show audio settings. All we really have left are keybinds. Are any of these useful? Oh yeah, visualized sound effects are very useful. I recommend using them. I don't just for content reasons. I don't want people to not watch my videos because I have it on, but it got buffed like crazy this season. Definitely try it out and let let me know your thoughts. Also, I have sound quality on high. That's the only way to make it not cut out mid end game. But I mean, yeah, those are all my audio settings. Now let's finally move on to the last settings we have your keybinds. I think I might just quickly run through all my current keybinds and then obviously explain optimal keybinds, show you guys what the best ones would be. Currently, this is what I'm rocking. No settings here, and I'll explain it in a minute. Um, sprint on right alt, that is just, that is what I use to bot walk. Going down, double bound, use keys, I showed that. Um, this is scroll wheel reset. And yeah, those are my current settings. Going back up to explain. The reason I have no movement keys is because I use double movement. That is how you actually use it for wooting and I believe for keys 2x. On the screen now is the video that I made of how to get double movement. It shows the two best softwares, how to set them up, the best settings for them. So go watch that video if you do not have double movement. Also go watch it if you want to switch softwares or you're just bored. It's a pretty good video and that is why I have no movement keys. It says I have none, but look, I can move. I'm not trolling. No movement is the meta. Not double movement, no movement. Then, like I said, I have sprint bound. I used to not have it, but it's kind of just cool to have it on a random key. That way with sprint by default, if you want a bot walk, let me do it. <laughs> you could look like a bot. I'm a controller player. What? I didn't mean it like that. As far as optimal keybinds go, you guys probably know the general idea for it. What optimal keybinds refer to are having all of your keybinds, or at least as many as you can, off of your movement key fingers. So your movement key fingers are your left index, this one right here. It's the one that presses D to go right. Then the other one is your left ring finger, which is how you go left. Also, this is double movement. Double movement allows me to run completely sideways. Please, please switch to it. It's so good. Nick A30 even just switched to it. You're holding yourself back. 
Look at the piece. Look how sharp these corners are. The piece is crazy. So you want your builds off of your index and your ring finger. I currently have two optimal keybinds, which are both on my mouse. My mouse has two buttons, which is where I have my wall and my ramp. No matter which direction I go, I can always run to the side, right and left, while holding out my wall. And that's because it's an optimal keybind. It is not on my left index finger or my left ring finger. Same with my ramp. If I do walls and ramps, I can just go completely to one side. Look how cool that is. Wow. Now, I do not have fully optimal keybinds just because I have left shift as crouch, which is one of the major ones that I recommend everyone utilize. That is part of having sprint by default turned on. You then get a free optimal keybind that everyone is used to. In a perfect world, I would have that on cone. That is what Mongrel uses, Boga uses, like every pro does. Left shift on cone. I have it on Q, which I hit with my ring finger. And I don't have optimal keybinds. I can't run left all the time. Then floor, which I personally think is the least important keybind. And I know that sounds bad, but like you really never piece people with your floor. So in a way, it does not need to be optimized. Obviously, if you can, then make it, but don't prioritize it. You should definitely prioritize your wall for wall replacing. Also just for high walls, which are one of the most important... Okay. High walls are extremely important for peace control. You also want to prioritize your cone, which I did not do two years ago <laughs> when I made my keybinds. Cone is definitely the second most important. Then ramp which I have on my mouse, like I said. My wall and my ramp being on my mouse are perfectly optimal. That is what I recommend everyone have. Thumb button for wall, thumb button for stairs, left shift for roof. Those are what you want and the most optimal keybinds. Then for floor, I recommend basically having anything you can hit with your thumb. So your left thumb, that usually can hit stuff like V, which I actually have my heels on. It can also be used for C or X. I mean, if you tilt your keyboard, Clix uses it for F. That's why Clix has really good movements and pretty optimized keybinds, which a lot of people don't realize. Clix hits F and G, which are his, I think, wall and edit key. He hits those with his left thumb. I don't use anything for my left thumb in terms of building just because it's really hard to get used to, but I mean, Noah Riley does. He uses C with his thumb. If you could use your thumb and say C for your floor, along with your two mouse side buttons and left shift, those should be the most optimal key binds you can possibly get. And those are what I recommend for your building binds. After that, you have crouch, which I recommend either on left control because that is what a lot of people, most people use. I use left shift just because I cannot really reach left control. I also broke my finger like five years ago and it never really healed. So if I try to press left control and left shift, it just really hurts my finger. I am literally at a disadvantage. I can never have fully optimal binds. Building edit, either have on E or F. I mean, you can use stuff like left shift if you have a really strong pinky finger. Most people, including myself, do not. I also recommend you guys use left shift for cone. Cone's way more important than optimal editing. And I know that sounds dumb, but trust me, it is. E and F are really close to your movement key so you're not really gonna lose a ton of control over your movement. That's kind of another rule for optimal keybinds. If you cannot use any of the keybinds I said, which are anything off of your left index and your left ring finger, your movement keys, then just use stuff that's close, like Q, use F, use R, use E, anything close to WASD. And no, I did not just pick my nose. I swear. That's why E and F are really good for editing. And I think other than that, the rest of it is kind of just preference. Weapon slots, I use my number keys, but just use anything you have left over. Like if you have E or Q left over from your optimal keybinds, then just use it for a weapon slot or for your pickaxe. These really do not matter as long as they're comfortable for you. And also as long as you do not have your shotgun or whichever one is that weapon slot on your ring finger. This was something Mongrel did and he didn't realize like if you go to pull out your shotgun and say it's on your left ring finger you're not going to be able to strafe to the side behind a peanut butter so i recommend putting it on your right index finger or just an optimal key bind like your thumb that you're not using for anything else because you always want to be able to strafe left while pulling out your shotgun it's like the only importance key bind regarding your weapons your shotgun is the most important weapon one and you just don't want to have it on your ring finger
Like, look at that. I could not do that if I had it on Q or any other thing with my ring finger. Let me know if I missed it. Oh, wait, I did miss one thing. You guys know scroll wheel down. That is for scroll wheel reset. If you don't have that, you're just a clown. It's the whole reason keyboard and mouse is so good. All I'm doing is scrolling down and it's resetting and it's not a macro. It's allowed in game. It's amazing. But what else I forgot was your use key. So for your use key, I recommend mouse wheel up. That is called scroll wheel pickup and it's what makes 50 50 off spawn so freaking nice. You just infinitely scroll. Scroll as hard as you can up and you're gonna be the first one to pick up any weapon to open any chest Any of that stuff. So yeah, you scroll wheel up for picking up stuff and then scroll wheel down for editing You know closing down stuff <laughs> Oh Man, I need some friends final check. Those are basically all the settings boys copy them use whatever you want Don't copy them. Actually. That's all my Fortnite settings Uh, I love you all Overall, guys, those are the best keyboard and mouse settings in Fortnite Chapter 3. So, if you guys enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone on the screen for using code Jarian. I appreciate each and every one of you guys so, so much. Boys, remember, if you have any video ideas for me, let me know. Tournaments are starting back up again, but I'm always open to any new ideas. Otherwise, that is it from me, and I will see you guys in the next next one. Later.